I won the Employee of the Month prize. I hope it's a bonus check. <laughs> was supposed to be for Paris, France. You got it. For Paris, Texas. Davy Jones! Vic told me about your dance. Would you like to go with me? Valerie! You learned that in sewing class? No, Vic. Arts and crafts. That darn girlfriend? That darn girlfriend is mine. Thank you for coming to StarNet Studios. I am Andre Tucker, and thanks for coming to see us. I am on with Pamela Hill and William Hill, very talented filmmakers and actors who I've had the pleasure of uh, speaking to and communicating with recently. So, Miss Pamela, Mr. William, how are you guys doing today? We're doing great. This is super exciting to be on with you and across the miles, and uh, we're feeling good. Yeah, we're, it's great. Uh, great to meet you, Andre. Yes, absolutely. Hey, same here. Likewise, I'm happy to have you on. <laughs> so we were working with. Uh, I had a chance to take a look at that darn girlfriend. Your YouTube you. production is uh, some funny stuff there. The particular episode that I'm uh, thinking about right now, you had the um, the, uh, the the game show, and oh yeah, and, you, <laughs> <laughs> and clearly, you know, you you had. Um, you know, you, you, um, Pamela, you you were hosting the show, and then William, you had some impressions of like uh, I believe Jack Nicholson, and Michael Caine. Yeah. So, so both of you um, are those people who kind of influenced the, both of your work when when you were you know coming up. Well, Katie Groovy, my game show host in this episode, Valerie's my main character, but the host I created uh, called Katie Groovy was actually developed in a comedy sketch group I did a handful of years ago. And I never got to use her in her That Down Girlfriend episode. So when the host was available, I'm like, Katie Groovy's coming out of my arsenal. So that's when she was developed. And yes, as far as being inspired, inspired by a lot of sketch and comedy and Saturday Night Live, Mad TV. So those things stay in my mind and just me having fun on my own and my own experience kind of bring things to life, uh, Andre, yeah. Yeah, and, and for me, it was kind of fun to get to play all those characters. <laughs> it was kind of like, it was kind of like getting to be Eddie Murphy in like Coming to America or like uh, The Clumps where he played every single character. And uh, yeah, Michael Caine, it, interestingly enough, when I was studying acting, Michael Caine wrote a book called Acting in Film and he also <laughs> did a video and the one thing I remember from the video was he's telling the students about how important it is to not blink when you're in your close up. Mm. That's a whole bit where he's like, and you look and you don't blink and you don't blink and you don't blink. And he just like, like for 30 seconds, nonstop his eye. I'm like, a, so I remember that. So it was always fun to bring in uh, Michael Caine. And interestingly enough, Jack Nicholson uh, wrote for the monkeys and we, because Pamela and her character, Valerie, love the monkeys so much and Davy <laughs> Jones. That was a organic way to bring Jack into the whole thing. I, you know, I, I remember the, the monkeys. I, I remember catching them, their show in, in reruns. And what I, I, I didn't know at the time that they were, they started, correct me if I'm wrong here, but they started as a television show and yeah, then yeah. the show became popular enough that they became a real band. Is that right? Yes, they were, some of them were already, pretty much all of them were musicians, but they were actors as well. So when the TV show took off, they just merged that and they did become a real band. And they were as big as at one time the Beatles and others. And some of their songs today, the writers behind the songs have really held up. And uh, um, yeah, it's an homage to the Monkees as well, because that time period was really fun. And the music makes me happy and Valerie happy. So. <laughs> <laughs> So who are some of your other uh, influences besides the people we've mentioned uh, when like when you were working and when you were viewing movies and television shows coming up? So, I mean, obviously you like the the comedy. So is there any any other people who you kind of looked at? Yeah, we're both on the same page with uh, we both love and still love Jim Carrey. Um, and uh, yeah. as far as other uh, comedic uh, probably went back to like Mary, Mary Tyler Moore. 
um, just some of those iconic comedic actresses, you know, um, they just really inspired me. And, uh, you know, dramatically, too, I, I'm an old school like Betty Davis, who, who would sometimes because she was so eccentric, could be comedic in her own right. But just uh, just a really good com com comedian, you know, again, from like Sketch Mary Saturday Night Live or Mad TV. Um, just really, um, really inspires me. Yeah, and I used to be told that I look a lot like Jim Carrey back in the day. Alrighty <laughs> then. <laughs> but for me, coming up, definitely as a kid, when Star Wars came out and George Lucas, that's what inspired me to want to become a filmmaker. And then as a martial artist, uh, I was heavily influenced by Bruce Lee and his movies and his writings and his teachings and so to this day, I kind of infuse a little bit of that in what we do. In fact, there's another episode. The prior episode is uh, Kicking Cousins. It's our it's our martial arts one. So that's kind of fun. Okay. Well, all right. Well, speaking of martial arts, so uh, you have a book called Cyber Fighter. Is that uh is that just what it sounds like? I mean, it sounds like it's got a lot of martial arts action on on the pages. Yeah, it's actually based on a feature screenplay that I wrote a few years ago and decided that while it, you know, trying to make the feature film, I might as well release the book first because it's a lot easier to put something out on, on in print than it is to actually make a movie. And so I, I self-published that on Amazon back uh, about a year ago. And um, I'm working on doing a short film as a proof of concept for the feature. And with that, uh, hopefully, you know, once the pandemic's over, we'll be able to go into full production with that because it's it's kind of hard to do social distancing when you got fight <laughs> scenes. You kind of yeah. have to have everybody vaccinated for that. But in the meantime, I'm about to release a comic book adaptation of the short film script. And what's great about that is I'm able to actually show my art design and my production design for that because there's a lot of CG that I'm working into it. So I can actually render that out in a comic book form. So you'll get to see what it should look like when we uh, finish the film. Yeah. Okay. Trying to so you, <laughs> mentioned pan, you mentioned the pandemic. So um, I imagine a lot of your episodes that you have uh, worked on for that darn girlfriend, they were done during this time. Is that, is that right? Yeah, uh, Andre, yeah. we uh, The first one we did during the pandemic was in May of last year. And we didn't want to hit people over the head with, you know, we know how hard and challenging it's been. So, you know, things come from different places. And sometimes you hold on to one little uh, tidbit. Like, again, we always say that darn girlfriend is like a comic strip. It's around a funny, like four panels. So we thought about the toilet paper. At one time, I don't know if you experienced this, the toilet paper was hard to find in many of the grocery stores. So we said, that's lighthearted. So Candy Graham, which Valerie's thinking chocolate's coming. Well, it was a delivery. I don't know if you saw that episode. There's two seasons worth, but delivery was, so, sorry, spoilers. There was a toilet paper delivery. <laughs> so she was quite frustrated with Vic because thinking she's getting chocolate, but it was not. But so we tried to keep it short and sweet. So, yes, we did do um, episode uh, five, which yeah. was Candy Graham. Episode yeah. six, we actually shot outside our apartment building, which with nobody around, which was Kicking Cousins, uh, an homage to Bruce Lee. And then number seven, the game we, show episode, we yeah. were able to do a virtual yeah. reality game show backdrop where we had more people. You saw all the characters. Um, so in, in essence, we've had uh, three episodes since. We try to do them every two to three months. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned earlier when we were speaking that you guys are in the Hollywood Hills. Is that correct? So that's where you're doing your shooting? We are. Yeah. I'm originally in our home. In our home. <laughs> yeah. We, we've been, I'm originally a girl from Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm just very fond of my hometown. But anyways, and Cincinnati creeps in from time to time. Um, but yes, we shoot. We've been very lucky, Andre. It really makes you think. I would just say this to a performer, your, you know, anybody in the arts. Even with a small space, and even in when we've not had a pandemic, we've had to perform sometime on very little stages before. You just make do. We've made our home um, aesthetically, hopefully pleasing. What happens sometimes, I will do a set design, and I like it so much, it stays part of our apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just try to find the corners. Bill's an excellent uh, director and DP. So we find the spaces that will kind of enhance the episode. And again, 
we do shoot from the apartment and last and uh, two episodes prior was outside the door. <laughs> yeah. The first time we actually Kicking did cousins. an exterior, use like the porch. full exterior. You stuff. make do when you have to, and you just try to keep it on point and creative. So, yeah. Well, I, well, I can see that you're making it work because you even have green screen in, in, <laughs> yeah. in there. And, you know, you have the the effects to go along with that for your, you know, your game show set. So I, I did, didn't notice that. So that. That's, yeah, Bill's that's really, I don't know so, how he does oh, by it. The way, and... Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's, no, it's fine. I was just going to say, um, you mentioned Cincinnati earlier. I mean, because I'm from Toledo. So I, Yay! You know, is, that, is that your kind of home town? It was Toledo? Or oh, you live yeah, Houston and Toledo, they're both cool. homes. I mean, Houston is where I am now. But yeah, Toledo is where I grew up. I've been in Houston for a, a long time. So nice. yay, Ohio. Yes. Oh, hi, you. I love it. I knew it. I just saw your eyes. I'm like, oh, I like Andre connected. It's very cool. <laughs> Likewise. And William, where did you grow up? I, I'm a Navy brat. So I grew up in San Diego and Hawaii. Yeah. Nice. So that's where I Na shot. In Navy I, brat. Yeah, Navy brat. My dad was a captain. And uh, uh, when we lived in Hawaii, we lived there for 10 years. So I pretty much say I grew up in Hawaii. And when I was there, that's when I started making movies in the backyard with my <laughs> brothers and sister. My first big one was a ninja movie that's on our channel, too. I, I uh, put that on our channel a few years ago. And he just remastered it. I, I, I it. just remastered it to make it a little <laughs> more updated. And not so much like a teenager put it together. But, yeah, it's uh, th that was fun. I learned more doing that than I would have if I went to USC, I think. Because when you have to actually solve problems on set... <laughs> And you, you learn how to do that. They don't teach that to you in film school. They teach you the academically of this is what cinematography should be. And this is how you do a three point lighting and that. But they don't tell you like, well, this so-and-so doesn't want to do the shot. And, you know, they don't want to like hit their mark or, oh, this light's not working. Well, how do you deal with that? So it was, it was kind of nice. Yeah, I understand that, and uh, I guess Hawaii is not a bad place to, you know, do your <laughs> do your training there. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, no instant production value. <laughs> right, 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 right. Because uh, did did you end up serving in the Navy as well, following in your uh, father's? No, they, just kinda... they, they, they tried to get me in, and the interesting seals. enough, that actually the there was this the commander of the Navy SEAL team that was stationed there they'd see how much I worked out and trained in martial arts. And he told my dad, hey, I can get your son into buds. My dad was like, uh, uh, Commander Howard says uh, he could uh, put in a good word for you if you want. I'm like, no, I want to go to Hollywood. <laughs> and I'll use the yeah. stuff I've learned in Hollywood. I'll play a SEAL, yeah. but, you know, you know, to be a SEAL. You really have to <laughs> want that. And I think um, unless you really, really want that life, you're you're going to drop out because – the training is so insane that you have to want it in order to go like, this is what I want. It, it, it makes sense because any rational, normal person would go, what am I doing here with this SEAL training? It's insane. But uh, I swam a lot too, which is another reason why I think that they thought I was a good fit because a lot of people like they, they freak out with the water and I was like, like a fish. So then I'm like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> but nah, I didn't want that life. So all right. So you knew then that you wanted to have some interest in the in the film business. So uh, Pamela, when you were oh. in, you know, in Cincinnati, I mean, did you know then or? Yeah, I was the shy kid who felt like I came alive and on stage, and um, I was very fortunate in Cincinnati that my parents enrolled me like in after school drama dramatics, and I was a cowboy in second grade. Still remember my monologue where the cowboys at barbecue ranch. I won't go through all that right now, <laughs> but I grew up. Yeah, I I knew it. Just watching stuff, I would act out my records, my monkey records. I would do my own music videos and Georgie Girl and was a song from a movie and seeing musicals, that was where my happy place was. I would sit for hours in front of the old fashioned tape recorder and read everything I could out loud, which actually has helped me now when I do actually narrate things, Andre. So the answer is yes. I just found it, it felt right. And I was able to continue doing acting and modeling back home. And then that's what brought me here. And then also got a husband later, but <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. 
So it all it all came together. It all came. It all came. Out. It all came together. But yeah, I knew early on. It just felt. Yeah, I think like the, my favorite quote. One of my favorite quotes is by the philosopher Joseph Campbell: "Follow your bliss," and that's what made my heart happy. And I think when you really know it, office you always hope to be paid for what you love, but you do it regardless. And I think you probably get that. Bill gets it. William gets it. A lot of names there. Um, so yeah, I found it early, Andre. Okay. So now the two of you have that that darn girlfriend. Are you continuing with that or or like more more future episodes or you or you kind of moved on to other things or well, we uh, we just wrapped up season two. First uh, season, we had uh, 12 episodes. Season two, we just had seven. And we just did a retrospective of behind the scenes of season two, which we did for season one to keep people with like the little secrets behind it. We are all's well planning to do a season three. And we're still enjoying it. And it's really exciting just to see the growth even in the characters. Because even one of the episodes, um, uh, timing is everything. See, it's like my babies in season one. Everything is, yes, it's comedic, but there's also moments that as long as they're authentic, um, it wasn't all happy, you know, like, ah, like everything's over the top. So we're discovering things about the characters, too, in the moment. So um, I'm, I'm still on board. We're still planning season three. Um, we'll hopefully have more ideas come. And when they come, wherever we're at, we write them down. So Yeah. So hopefully, like, within a couple months, we should start with the season three. Still have to work out. Uh, where we want to take, we kind of have an idea of where we're going to take the whole series. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. We, you know, it sounds like one of those big uh, uh, shows on te television, yeah. the miniseries, but we actually have an ending down the line. Yeah. The, the tricky part is like when you know where it's going to go and you know where you are and you go like, well, okay. Uh, do we want to take a left turn and, or, or do we want to head directly towards that arc? Well, and just to, just to cue and just to tell you again, uh, that darn girlfriend's an homage to the sixties, seventies, but, mm -hmm. um, fancy, we don't say, we don't say exactly what the time period is, even though it is. So we fancy ourselves in that time period. So we have a way, hopefully as we go and maybe at the end to pull it together. And we can't say that now, but, um, yeah, it's done as if it's the the 1960s, 70s, but we're deliberately ambiguous over and where, are we really there? Yeah, so. <laughs> Yay, Andre! Understood. Andre. understood. <laughs> it it, it kind of reminds me of the um, of the way, if I remember correctly, because it's been a long time, I believe the Bra the Brady Bunch film was done done yeah. that way. Because you know what? They that were, is a good... Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Because I believe, because if yeah. I... If, Remember correctly? Yes, the original show was in the you know sixties or seventies, but but the, when the film came out with uh, Gary Cole and, uh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I believe Shelley Long, um, it was still like it was modern. It was it was that it was them, but it was modern day. I mean, even though it was they. They still kind of live like it was the 60s and 70s, but they were it was yeah. set in the modern day. You know day. what? Thank you. That is an excellent point. And actually, we draw some things from it. Uh, we had uh, There was one of the episodes in the Brady Bunch where Greg had the wrong hair tonic. And one of our episodes, <laughs> um, a Hair Today, is drawn from that. But again, it could be just one. We're like, ooh. And it stays, and then you have to write around it and hopefully make it work. But that's a really good point. Yeah, the Brady Bunch movies were definitely... Uh, that, yeah, that it's definitely like visual. every every time we watch retro TV and we we'll mm. watch the old sitcoms, sometimes it yeah. gives us an idea, and then Pamela will immediately pull out her I notepad. Have, you got to write it down when you get it right. And a lot of times we'll write it. She once wrote an entire episode <laughs> in the middle of yoga class. <laughs> she was just we were doing yoga at the gym after after training. We like to cool down with yoga, and you know the teachers leading us through these the the yoga poses. And I could just hear her like snickering, like uh, under her breath, just laughing. And then afterwards, she's, ah, I wrote the next episode. Yeah, or just a real fact. Uh, our nephew came up for a title, episode four, season one, called Valerie. It's when we play mm. Scrabble, which is one of my favorite episodes, but it's spelled V O W E L E R I E. And I love the title. And sometimes it just takes a title to make you work around it. But yeah, it was during yoga. When I was done, I said in the car, I'm like, guess what? I wrote the episode. Yeah, normally we have <laughs> co-writing credit, but then she pitched me the entire thing on the ride home. And I said, that's great. You get full credit for it. So that's, she fully wrote that one, but she wrote it in yoga class. <laughs> yeah, inspiration comes where, when it comes, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you get, you understand, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I do.
So let me ask you: once, if someone wanted to see that darn girlfriend, where would be where would they look? They would look uh, a couple of places. Our YouTube channel is for Scorpio, for Scorpio, which we have a lot of Scorpio and astrology chart. For Scorpio dot com is our yeah our website for Scorpio, and it's F O U R S C O R P I O and the dot com. That's the website, which also has our episodes on on listed there. Or but the easiest way to do it, if you go to YouTube and you just type in that darn girlfriend, put it in quotes, and when you see the pink title, you know that's us. Yeah, it's cartoony. That darn girlfriend at YouTube is probably the easiest. Because that's our trademark too. It's kind of like Bewitched, how they the end credits would be like cartoony or the, you know the credit. Mm. So I kind of like have little cartoony sequences too. So it's very retro, and, and that's then, our branding. And then and then people still like Andre. If you caught the end, uh, the people who know we have some outtakes. We don't force the outtakes, but if they happen naturally, I think people just like to see us in real life, yeah. how we interact in our studio apartment, trying to get this done. And uh, those are always fun. If it happens, it happens. If it's not, we don't have any it's, outtakes. It's funny when both of you are the showrunner. <laughs> <laughs> and even though I might be the director. I'm not really the director with this one because no. sometimes if she doesn't like the direction, she'll like it's all, it. it's, it's all in love. But it makes <laughs> her great outtakes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we will be looking for that, and I'm sure everyone will be looking out for season three. Look, uh, look forward to seeing what else you guys uh, come up with in this works in the future so um thank you for coming on uh pamela and william hill thank you very much i appreciate your time and uh just uh good good luck with your next uh season three and everything else you have going on thanks so much thanks so much andre such a pleasure we wish you the best everything too this was delightful thank you so much